What, what about when uh, a leader um, faces doubts among the people the leader is leading? When he faces what? Doubts. Doubts and uncertainties. The leader is saying, let's go in this direction, let's do this. And the people the leader is leading says, no, 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 we can't, that's a, a bad way, that's a scary way, something bad is going to happen. How does a leader have to overcome these doubts and fears well, in the fellowship? One well, thing I know is, is he sticks with his views. And, and uh, now you, you've got to bear in mind this. You've got to be practical about a lot of things. I mean, for example, when I was coming along, you could just stand on the corner and make any, take it, make any fool remark that you want to make about segregation or about white people. Uh, you had to temper your, temper your remarks and be respectful uh, and, and be practical. You also, from time to time, you have to compromise. I don't have no problem on, on that. But you don't compromise a basic principle. Uh, for example, uh, I wouldn't compromise by anybody because I said, uh, I'll agree with you that we don't no longer need need uh, 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 what, what is it we, we need to, uh, what, what is the word what we what thing we, everybody's opposed to right now affirmative action affirmative action affirmative action we need affirmative action and, and uh, but now I might go along with some things that might not be quite what I want so far, but as long as, long as there was some portion of it affirmatively moving in the right direction. But all I'm trying to point out is that uh, you have to be practical sometimes, but you don't, you can't just stand on the corner and I never called some SOBs that, that, that I thought were SOBs uh, an SOB publicly. Because uh, it didn't make sense. I wouldn't gain anything. It wouldn't have gained anything by doing it. Well, how, how have you dealt in your career with uh, your own threats, or threats against you, the cross burned in, on your lawn, and you must have had telephone threats? Oh, gosh. Uh, now, how do you deal with those things? Well, <laughs> we took the telephone off the hook at night and, and put it in the trash can next to, next to the bed uh, for from, from 1947 until I went to Washington in 1960. Uh, uh, every now and then, we, after six, seven months, we try to see if, if they, they, they gonna let up, and, and they didn't. So the only way we could get a full night's sleep was to put the phone on the hook. Telephone company raised hell about it, and I told them, you could, you could trace these calls if you wanted to, you don't you won't cooperate, and I'm not going to cooperate. So you, you you just stand up for your rights. That's the only way I know to deal with things. Now, how did you deal during this long legal career? I'm sure many of your clients uh, couldn't pay. Oh, you know, how how did you deal with that? <laughs> just didn't get paid. That's all. We just didn't get paid. I mean, I bet you six bits to dime that uh, you can't find uh, the, over the years that we worked from first as Hill, Martin, and Robinson on down to Hill, Marsh, Hill Tucker, and Marsh. The people it did as much free liquor work as, as, we, as we, we have done through, down through the years. We never turned away anybody because they didn't, have, they didn't have money that we could afford to do with it. I mean, of uh, course, they've come, somebody come in with, with some kind of case that required expenditure of two or three hundred thousand dollars to 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 ultimately win, well, we, we we couldn't do it because we we didn't, we didn't have that kind of finance, that kind of capitalization. But anything that we could do within reason, we 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 did it, whether we got paid or not. Do you ever think that uh, had this been a very very different world, that you could have been? the senior partner by now in a big downtown Richmond law firm, uh, 
uh, charging $500 or more an hour to clients to come in to get your advice? No, I, I never, even, never even thought about things like that. That's, 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 that's those kind of fantasies. It's a waste of time. Uh, I was never dissatisfied with the situation which I was in uh, so far as, as that was concerned. I, I never aspired to, to be rich. Uh, all our, we, 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 we made a fair uh, income. Yeah, I was able to live comfortably with, with my wife's help. And, uh, and that was, oh, we were doing things that we wanted to do. And that was all we all aspired to. You remember now, great wealth is, is, is a, not only a blessing, it's also a burden. And uh, you can't, it's not all, all the benefits. You know, when I was a kid, we, <laughs> we used to be, be sorry for poor little white children. I mean, poor little rich children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they couldn't run out on the field and play baseball and do the things they, according to the movies, they, the only thing they could do was play along with the butler and the maid. Mm -hmm. <laughs>